friends, family, and card fighters from around the world, welcome back to my channel, and today we'll be going through my premium Tachikaze list. Um, I do apologise, it took a bit longer to get this one. I did have a previous recording, and as I was editing it, it just sort of self-deleted. <laughs> I was a bit annoyed by that, so I didn't do it for a couple of days. Um, but yeah, so finally getting to it, and... It's a fun deck, it really is. Anyone who's already got it and played it knows it's a lot of fun. And can do some stupid stuff when you get it all going. So, yeah, I'll jump, jump straight into it, you know, go through the list, you can decide for yourself. <laughs> Play a little Kano, you know. Got the quick shield thing on it. All V starters are the same. It was actually one of the things I kind of liked about V was the consistency and you know no broken starters as it were. Grade 3 lineup we start off with four copies of Light Battle Dragon Gigan Gigano Blazer, yeah. I always struggle with that. His first skill is during your turn if three or more new equip gauges were put for your units this turn, all of your front row gets five K. It's a nifty little skill but it's not important. We don't use that skill, like, ever. Its second skill is act Vanguard once per turn, count plus one, sub plus one, draw two, and call two cards from your hand to guard circle, to regard circle. Put up to one card from the top of your deck face down as an equip gauge for each of those units. That's just, like, a hard plus on that. So, the reason you play him is because you want to be riding him as your main grade three. Also, you get Excel, which is nice. Because with the Excel, you also draw one because you're playing Excel 2. But drawing 2, calling, gauging, it just sets everything off. And then you can just go ham at that point. It's really good. It's really nice. So a definite 4 of, he's the one you want to see. And if you can, you want to ride him more than once so you can pull the skill off multiple times. Uh, next, I run three copies of. Oh my god. Sorry. <laughs> Fiery Light Dragon. Optical Serato. Okay. Yeah, fun time. Uh, his skill, it's a very simple Vanguard Rearguard Auto. When placed or when it attacks a Vanguard, you may put the top card face down as an equip of your deck face down as an equip deck for one of your rearguards. Um, that's really cool because you can proc it twice in a turn. You can call it gauge, attack, gauge. Um, he's there to keep to get the gauge engine going for. Well, you know, to get just to get the gauge engine going because what building up gauge for one or two particular units is really good. Is what this deck does. So three of those, and then I run. One copy as a tech of Sundering Dragon Terra Therazino. His skill is Vanguard Rearguard. When this unit attacks, when it attacks a Vanguard, retire another Rearguard, draw a card, and if the retired unit had an equip gauge, you can retire one of your opponent's units. So, you don't use it very often. Um, you kind of partner him with. Nasoteryx, you know, that's sort of the only time you really use him. But just a one of as a tech, and the other one of tech is one copy of the Savage Mercenary. He's a 27k base. Um, he's, he can't be ridden, so you can't ride him as a grade 3, which is, you know, fair enough. And his other skill is, if you have no units in the same column as this unit with a equip gauge, he can't attack, so you can either put him on an Excel and give him the gauge, in which case he can attack because there is a unit in his column with a gauge, or you can just throw him on a normal rear guard and you've still got a 27k beta. So, like, yeah, really good. So that's a couple of techs. Uh, undergrade twos, we got four copies of. Sweep. 
he is basically the reason you build this deck is this guy. Without him, um, I, the deck would just go down a lot harder. It's the best card in Tachikaze, I think. <laughs> Skill is auto regard when this unit attacks a vanguard. Put the top card of your deck down as an equip gauge. Fair enough. Second skill, and this is where the skill is good, continuous rearguard. This unit gets 5k for each of this unit's equip gauge, and if it has three or more equip gauges, it cannot be chosen by your opponent's card's abilities. And that's at all times. So, you get three gauge on it, it's 24k, even during your opponent's turn. It can't be retired, it can't be bound, it can't be locked. D there's... You know, it has to be one of those, um, you know, choose, a, like choose one of your units, nuke the column sort of things, or um, if you're locking something, lock something from your hand onto that rear guard circle or something, you know. But it can't just be targeted, which is really strong, which is so good. So definitely four of this card. This card makes the deck. This card is the reason the deck is as fun and as good as it is. Because you can, by the end of the game... You're hitting such ridiculous numbers, it's stupid. And then it's sort of like a secondary run. I run three copies of Mega Rex. His skill is Auto Vanguard Rearguard. When it attacks a Vanguard, retire another Rearguard, draw a card. And if this unit is on Rearguard, count plus one, put the top card down as an equip gauge, and it gets 5k for each of this unit's gauges until the end of the battle. So, he can also hit really big numbers, but, I don't know, I don't like, I prefer not to, if, if he have a choice, you're gonna go into Sweeper, because Sweep is just easily the best choice. But, um, he's a good backup, you can still hit a big number, you can draw, you can burn something, but yeah, so, He's just there as a secondary high number if he can't get Sweeper on the board for some reason. And then finally for Grade 2's, I run three copies of Regiodon? Regiodon, I don't know. Uh, so he's got two skills. The first one is when it attacks, you may put the top card down as a equip gauge for a unit, for one of your regards. So, again just pumping sweeper just so much gauge powering him up every time and when retired from your regard by your card's ability call up to one card from this unit's equip gauge to regard you may pay and you may put the top card down as it but you know so yeah I he, he's basically there just to put gauges onto other units because why wouldn't you? You know, gauge equals power in this deck. Uh, and then for grade ones, we've got four copies of this guy Zandilofo. I think Zandilofo. Uh, he, I really like this card. I think this card is fantastic. Um, so his first skill is. So his only skill is act regard rest this unit, choose one of your regards and put the top card of your deck face down as an equip gauge for that unit, or move all of one of your regards equip gauges to that unit. So you can pair him with I think it's the main stride. Yeah, so if you pair him with the main stride's first skill, you call him, you get three guards from the three cards from the drop zone into his gauge, rest him, put the three cards from his gauge into another unit. So, you know, yeah. Uh, then, Karen Blast 1 and the chosen unit gets 5k until the end of turn. So, that bit's not as, you know, sweet, but the ability to move gauge around from unit to unit or to just continually pump up is really nice. So play four of those because it helps, you know, charge. Uh, then I play four copies of 
Lassiterix. Sorry. Skill is auto regard when placed from hand. Put a gauge on this unit from the deck. Yeah. Continuous. When it would be retired from rearguard, you may sell blast one. If you do, return up to one gauge equipped to this unit to your hand. So where he comes in, it comes in handy. Is he's really good to put on the board when you know you're going to be burning stuff. So if you have, you know, if you use a certain stride that burns things, which you have, if you go for, you know, there's that guy, or Mega Rex, you know, you can, you can plus off of him by Soul Blasting to get the card that his gauge is, that he has. So it's it's a little bit of a plus, he's, he's the one that I want on the board when I'm burning stuff. So, that's basically what he's there for. He, he, he just generates a bit of extra hand advantage when you can take him off a bit more reward for eating your board. Uh, next to run three copies of Savage Shooter. It's a really it's a really good early game. When play sub plus one, draw a card, call a card from your hand to regard and put the top card of as of your deck face down as a gauge. When this procs into when if if you have the right hand or you draw the right card, I've used this card drawn into sweeper and then called sweeper and got gauge going when I'm on grade one. Which allows for a really a lot of early game rush, because it means when you attack with sweeper, he's already at nineteen k because he just gave himself one. You hit grade two, he's already set up for the game. He's gonna have his third gauge that turn. He's gonna be so that first skill more than anything can seriously put you in a winning position if you open with the right cards or even luck into sweeper. So the next skill is act regard rest this unit put and put a card from your drop zone face down as an equip gauge for one of your regards without any gauge. Um, you don't use that skill too often, but it is useful if it comes up. But primarily, it's that first skill. That first skill in the right with the right cards available can seriously just win you the game. So definite three. I wouldn't run four because you, after if once you've hit your grade one vanguard, you you don't need him. He essentially useless because you rarely have a card on the board without a gauge. Uh, then I play to raw barrio barrio. Uh, Touch of cards their names have always messed with me. Uh, auto regard when play sub last one and put the top card of your deck face down as an equip gauge for one of your other regards and that unit gets 5k until the end of turn for each of its equip gauges. This thing is stupid. <laughs> um, like with the other guy, you only play two because you're not going to use him too often. But what it can do is, if you are trying to push for turn and you just, you just don't have it, you know, you have a, you have a sweeper on board, so you can put, give him another gauge, and then all of his gauges are worth 10k, as opposed to 5, with the combined two skills. Or you can put down, you know, you can even, if you really wanted to, and you were in a really desperate situation, you know... You could throw down a trigger with if if you if, you know if you're on him, you can throw down a trigger, give it three gauge, call down him, give it a fourth gauge, and then just give it twenty an additional twenty k. So he can he he comes in handy from time to time when you feel like you're in a bit of a bad situation or you're trying to make your trying to push for game by just increasing power on units. So I think two of him's nice. It's, yeah, I think he's a nice little tech. And speaking of techs, just play one. Uh, this deck doesn't really burn through resources like Counter Charge and Soul, like Counter Blast and Soul Blast too often. Um, because 
the deck the deck tends to run really really quickly either you're gauging so much that you'll deck yourself out before this becomes necessary or you will win the game or lose the game either way the game games of this deck don't tend to last a long time but he's he's a good little tech if you just need that a one extra counter blast available just to make a turn go all the way he's a good one of tech um, and because this is like super premium under triggers we can play this because we can now <laughs> um, the, the the big choice with all the decks in premium is whether to play the nation or the cray um, I know some decks prefer the cray elemental um, one of my other premium decks does prefer the cray elemental simply because well it just works better um, but but in this case restanding this guy if you get him means that you can use his on attack skill again and you can restand all your dudes again so so just as like an example right as to why this is so good i know it's a bit stupid but even if you've only got those two let's let's just say you've only got two units to stand and you swing with those and you swing with this you use his skill you stand those but you check that and stand him you swing with those, you swing with this, you stand them again. It makes what is already a very powerhouse turn by restanding these at this point in the game into you have to be extraordinarily lucky to survive a turn if you check this on this turn. So definitely, definitely worth having the nation one for this because I mean, aside from restanding your vanguard at 100 million power, it's um just awesome. It's like um vermilion premium vermilion. You should not run this. Not because it's not good, but because when you hit your final turn and you're getting like six, seven, eight checks, and you restand it, you're not going to do that again because you'll deck out and you'll lose before the turn's over. So, like. Some decks you don't want to run the nation, but in this deck you do want to run the nation. So, nation. Uh, then I run six crits. Uh, two of the Intersoul 10k draw a card, just cause. Three of the stride crits, because you still want to stride, stride in this deck, and having the ability to free up the grade one space is really nice, so you know. Crits. And then I play one copy of the 30k shield. Because on occasion a 30k shield is better than a null. Because you can keep that hand advantage. So in total that's 7 crits. Because putting a crit on a restanding unit that has 40, 50, 60k is amazing. Uh, then I run 4 draws, 3 nulls and just 1 additional draw. I, I do like having the draws. Um, I wouldn't play more than four because you'll probably deck yourself out. But still, um, draws are good. Draws are important. Then I run four heals. I run two of the 20k shield heals and two of the Tara clone because G guarding and resource. As I said earlier, resources aren't like an issue in this deck at all. But it is there just to do it if you need it. So, resourcing. Uh, then on to the stride zone, G zone. Run four copies of the big bad. Gian Genshurapta. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that again. I probably butchered it already. But this dude, mixed with Sweeper especially, is fantastic. So his first skill is a once per turn only when he's on Vanguard. When your rear guard is placed from hand, you may put three cards from your drop zone face down as a quick gauge. 
which it lightens it helps because it lightens the load on your deck a little you can and what the other good thing is you if you call a sweeper he's automatically set up he's got the three he's got the 24k base he can't be retired or bound or locked individually so that's straight up that's a really nice skill the second skill is when this unit attacks you can bust one flip a g unit stand all of your regards with three or more equip gauge Choose the same number of your opponent's regards and retire them. It's probably the part of the skill I always forget. But yeah, so if you can stand up... So if, if depending on how you play it, if you have four front row regards with three or more gauge, you can attack with them, attack with him, stand them, retire four of your opponent's units, and swing in again with huge numbers. So this, this card is fantastic. Like, you... I think as he gets at the point where if you're playing premium Tachikaze, you wouldn't not run this card. I think I think the only deck you wouldn't do it is in is if you built a version of premium Ancient Dragons, because they don't really use gauge. But yeah, definite, definite, definite four of, like without hesitation. Uh, then I run one copy of Gluttony Nebiros, Nebiros. Uh, so he's got the engorge skill. He's got the skill when it becomes engorged, choose one, of, choose two of your opponents where you have to retire them, and then flip each G unit, and put a total of up to five of your regards equipped gauge to the drop zone. That was eroded, so it's regards or equipped gauge. So it doesn't just have to be equipped gauge. It can be other things. Um, because it was really confusing and a few people like myself didn't actually get this at the start because it was like, well, I don't run a crypt gauge. Or you don't want to do it. Yeah. So that's his restand cast, like the other, like Dogma. And his next skill is Act G Zone. Once per turn, if this card is face up, Soul Blast 1, put a card from the top of your deck as it down as a crypt gauge from one of your regards and it becomes engorged for the turn. So if you're using the engorge mechanic, so that can be useful because you can put that extra, you know, gauge on a unit. And if you're running the engorge engine, he's good in engorge as well. So uh, then I still run two of the original gluttony dogmas, uh, simply because I think when compared, I, I just prefer that one. The other one. So this one is. When it's engorged, if the number of units retired during this turn, due to this effect, unit's engorge abilities three or more, he gets 10k. And if it's at the end of the attack battle, it attacked. If it's five that was retired or more, stand this unit and get thrive minus one. Um, so the other one does restand and doesn't lose a drive. But I think being able to restand with the additional 10k. I don't know, it just, I like having him, that might just ultimately be what it comes down to, an extra driver or a 10k buff. Uh, then I run two copies of Gaia Devastate, uh, mo all of these strides, are, if, if you hit the point in the game somehow where you have used all of your destruction tyrants then um you're pretty much dead anyway but they're just there they provide different options uh, his skill is he has some god skill can blast one choose a face down card with the same name i haven't played this guy in a long time when this unit becomes in god you may pay the cost if you do draw a card choose up to any two circles other than vanguard for each face up card in your g zone and put all of the cards on those circles into the drop zone. If the number of your cards put into the drop zone is three or more, this unit gets 10k, crit plus one, drive plus one. So, if, if you pull it off, so when you do it, he's, you know, a 36k crit with quad drive, which is really nice. Um, the big thing is, like, he was really good in, in Gorge because he could have these hilarious turns with Gaia. 
but you don't with most of these stripes you you rarely ever see them anyway so because you the, the game will be over before you run out of um, your tyrant other tyrants uh, then there's two di two dynast uh, his first skill is a G3. When a rearguard is retired by this by this unit, you can counter plus one and call it to rearguard and give it 3k. His other skill is auto vanguard persona flip. When this unit becomes engorged, choose one of your rearguards and retire all rearguards in the same column and then counter charge one. So, again, you don't use him too much, but, you know, he's there, he's an option, he's kind of fun. And you got the G8. Just end game power. You can sack your back row, burn a couple of your opponent's units, power up your front row. Because I'm pretty sure it's when your rearguard is retired, she's up to one of your opponent's rearguards retire it. She's one of your rearguards, that unit, and this unit. So if you retired three, he gets 30, and you can designate another three 10k installments to other units. So if you really want to, you can take four units down and go 40 40. Um, or if you. You know, which is probably the best way to use him, honestly, to get two massive swings. But again, if he um, is that till the end of turn? Yeah, it's until the end of turn. So if you manage to get the nation, the over trigger, and restand him, he restands at a massive number anyway. But you know, cool. Uh, under G guards, I play one copy of. The blockade, Ganga. Skill is choose one of your regards to retire it. When this unit is placed on guard circle, you may pay the cost. If you do, this unit gets 10k. Until the end of that battle, choose up to two of your regards, and they get when this unit is retired, return it to your hand. Uh, you don't use it too often. He's another unit where he can be beneficial if you've got Lassoterix the on the board or a dead card, but. I rarely use him. I primarily use him as flip fodder for Barrage Giant Cannon. His skill is choose a G Guardian and flip him. And when this unit is placed in Guard Circle, you may pay the cost. If you do, this unit gets 5,000 power until the end of battle for each of your open circles. So, you know, I mainly flip him for that. He can be useful, but he's mainly flip fodder for my, for my pretty man. And then I just run two of the generic 20Ks. Um, if you have less than or equal to the number of regards, he becomes a 20K shield. That's all I use him for. He, he's cheap, he's easy, he's quick. So, makes sense to me. So that's the deck. And the zone. Um... I do run Excel 2 for this deck in particular. It, it does mean you draw a little bit quicker, but the main thing is with the amount of gauge you're doing, if you can. The amount of games where I've only seen one sweeper because I've gauged the other three is really fr can be really frustrating, so just having that extra draw can sometimes prevent that. You can get that extra piece you need, or, you know extra guard so I think I think Excel 2 has just generally become the better Excel um, so yeah that's it I hope you guys enjoyed thank you very much for watching if you if you liked it please leave a like and subscribe I'd, I'd appreciate that help the channel grow and yeah thank you very much have a good one